right? Now, I got my buddy Rob Bison in here already. Rob's going to be actually taking note of any and all questions he'll be posting in chat to make sure everything's set up. Obviously, we do shoutouts and everything at the end. But uh, first and foremost, bro, how are you, man? I'm doing good. I'm just, just vibing, man. Just How's good. Just vibe, Dude, you're better than vibing right now, man. You're, you're, right, <laughs> you're riding a high that lots of people chase. And we're going to jump into all of that once we dip into the podcast. Honestly, of course. We're pretty set up right now, so I mean, I have no qualms about starting this right now and keeping it going. Um, so first and foremost, man, this is fucking funny for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, huh? This is really, really, really funny for me. So just as a background, we'll probably touch upon this a bit more for everyone who's coming from Aiden Stream, uh, who's going to want to find out more about this. We knew each other years back on Twitch before my Switch to Mixer, before everything else. We knew each other through Fortnite and through gaming, and it was just this really, really, really crazy uh, just friendship of two people who were seriously trying to crawl out of the mud, right? I mean, yeah, in, the, in the world of content creation, there's a million people who are all trying to make it and trying to do things in their own way. Um, I think that I've definitely evolved a lot. I think that you've definitely evolved a lot, and so I think for a lot of the people who are, who are tuning in, you know, after we get past the first initial questions, we'll jump into it. As the podcast format goes, it's a three-segment podcast. Number one is the same five questions I ask every content creator I have on. Uh, they're questions that dive into a little bit about you and in your background that I think open up eyes to things nobody even knew or didn't know they wanted to know. Segment number two is a couple questions that I specifically have for you. And segment three is kind of a free-for-all grab bag. We talk about whatever is going on in the community right now, things that we want to bring light to, and also maybe a couple of helpful tips to people who are trying to jump in and, you know, get themselves off the ground as well, too. Um, another thing that I just want to toss on top of that, too, that I think is important is at the end, anyone who asks questions, Rob Bison in chat is going to be collecting any and all the questions. Uh, he's going to be putting a link into the chat where you can DM him on Discord. He's going to collect them at the end. We'll go through all of them. We can't always hit all of them. We're going to try to hit as many as possible. We're not going to be reading chat, either of us. I know you guys are saying some phenomenal things, and we're going to get to as many of that as possible. But it's just to make sure that the focus is on the conversation, the conversation only. First off, I know I'm not the setup reviewer, but your thing is unbelievable, man. It is fire. Yeah, thank you. You know, it makes thank me you. kind of regret the green screen. It's kind of like I, oh, I, yeah. love, I love the green screen, but then I see your setup, and I'm like, goodness gracious, man. I mean, it looks cozy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely... Uh... A blessing you know <laughs> like just to build this over the last couple weeks has been like incredible bro like it's just i never thought it would be like where it's at now you know what i'm saying i wouldn't want to walk in your room i'd be afraid to trip every trip is like seven thousand dollars <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's how i've been feeling recently like i it's so hard not to mess up anything you know yeah well you have it all set up linked with the lights and everything so i think that you're obviously on the right path for the setups and i know setup reviews is something that actually helped you get to that point. So we're going to be jumping to that after we get to the first five questions. But the first thing that I want to ask, which I think is most important, uh, this is question number one that we ask everybody, is it's kind of a two-part question as most of these are, but what got you into gaming in the first place? Like, what was the first game that you played? And, and for you personally, what draws you towards a game that you think you would actually enjoy? So the very first game I played, which I was like, I think I was like five, I played on the uh, PS2 like way back. Um, oh boy! And I also played when I was when I was really young. I played the N64. I played GameCube. I played Wii. I played Xbox. I had literally almost every console back then. So I played like literally everything. I used to play like all kinds of stuff. And um, yeah, I, I think I started off on Super Smash Bros. N64. Yeah. <laughs> and I worked my way up to Wii and uh, GameCube, all that kind of stuff. And as that got, you know rolling and rolling and rolling i got my ds and played pokemon a lot on ds then i got a laptop started playing on that playing on xbox 360 with uh bo2 a lot all that stuff and that's kind of how i can it kind of steamrolled into like where i'm at now um and yeah that's kind of where it started you know and it now it's just kind of like with me um you're saying um what kind of draws me to a game I think the best games are what you can interact with chat, but also have fun in. And I think right now, like an example why Fall Guys is super popular and why Among Us is super popular is that people yeah. would like the drama that in, in games. Or um, same with Rust right now, why OTUV is blowing up because other streamers are able to give like a good storyline and things to read into. 
And I think that's why those games are doing popular right now, just because of that reason. It's funny that you think of it that way, because usually when I ask, usually everyone has a different answer. That's the one thing I like about these initial questions is they lead to certain other things that you may not have known. So your first thing in thinking of a game is, how does this relate to me being the best streamer I can be? Not opposed yeah. to, I want to play this because I want to play this, right? Yeah, it's yeah, it's more like for me, like if I, if I look at a game and I'm like, man, this would be so much fun to have chat watch me play this, you know what I mean? Or, or you know, this this game would be super fun to play. Um, you know, maybe get my chat involved with like watching it or having a funny, you know, moment happen or something like that. Like that would be better for me than playing a game that I have more fun in just because of other things. So, you know what I mean? So for me, I kind of think of it that way. No, that totally, that totally makes sense. I think that's an issue for a lot of content creators is because they want this mixture where it's like, I want to do this because it's fun for me, but it doesn't always lead to the best content, right? But there are people yeah. who also pioneer that field where they play a game because solely they love that, and that brings them traction. And all those different fields or paths that everyone can take. But I think that um, I think that in this case, I've been seeing you play a lot of FPS. You mentioned your early upbringing with a lot of Nintendo, a lot of things like that. Do you think that for you personally, that having the ability to jump into a game that you bring more people in is what makes FPS an easier avenue? Or do you think that it's just that because I see for you, it's mostly FPS. You like to shoot. You're hella good at it, too. If you watch the videos and everything else, I mean, you're, you're killing it. So um, yeah. is it that open avenue that you can just, you know, click a button and all your subs come into a game? Or is it just the fact that that's what you like doing personally more? Because you could do the same with a game like Smash or you could do the same with a game like Pokemon. But and, you, yeah, you, you I, like I FPS personally. It. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I actually have uh, I actually have done it um, with, you know, um super Smash Bros. melee i actually introduced my stream to it the other day you know like that that kind of stuff is actually pretty interesting to still see the same numbers across whatever game and i think for me regardless what a game i play i still have the same core community and now it's just trying to find that game that will blow me up even further than the community i'm in um you know what i mean and that and that's just a part of everything um and stuff like that you know what i mean yeah so like blowing up within that within your niche and being a streamer i market myself more as a streamer and personality than i do on a game you know what i mean yeah i try to disassociate myself with gaming and more just a just chatting streamer even though i play games and i started on games that's not where my direction is headed you know what i mean it's more about um, your content than it is about what's on the screen it's about you okay. rather than the game yeah exactly and i think a lot of people still still align with that um yeah, the gaming is fun and it, and it is I think something that I do, but I feel like my content is more aligned with me being the person that they ask questions to or the person that they leak, like they need for guidance on things or questions they have for stuff. Cause in the way that I see it is like, my, my audience from TikTok is mainly, you know, younger audience. They want to know how to start streaming. They want yeah, they want to do what all that kind of stuff. And the way I kind of look at it is like, if I can help them like do something that they're passionate in and they all will also support me, then it's like, then I'm going to support them. And that's the way I see it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. No, that, that 100% makes sense. Well, now I have to ask a separate question because this is important. Who do you main in Smash? <laughs> oh, Cap, uh, Captain Falco. No cap. Falco still? Even in like uh, Ultimate? And Melee. Oh, I haven't played Ultimate in super long. I oh. played, uh, I played uh, Brawl. I, I played him in Brawl. I played him in Melee. Um, and I played him pretty much the whole time in, in N64, he was, I don't even know if he was in N64, right? It's been so long since I played. I, I believe he was. Yeah. He was one of the original. Yeah. Cast. Yeah. But Captain Falco was the one character that I can slay out and melee on. I used to play it in high school a lot. Uh, there was like these rooms that you'd have on lunch. You would go in and play for like 30 minutes and it was like a solid, it was a solid 30 minutes. Everybody roll up. <laughs> So the game cubes they plug in and then we just be rolling some melee like that was like my shit in high school um that's huge so it was cool if you yeah. ever pick up ultimate we got to get at it man i'm a game and watch main i uh i love the silly antics throwing the fish across the map and everything else yeah i gotta get a switch first it's been so long really your room looks like that you don't got a switch man <laughs> <laughs> didn't fit did, one yet didn't fit the necessities gotcha gotcha yeah well, that actually leads right into question number two, because a couple of things in question one brought us to this point. But number two is what specifically brought you into streaming? It's obvious that now that you're streaming, you care deeply about your community and how your community views your content. But this is an honest, open ended question. You don't have to feel any kind of way about answering it. Was it money? Was it fame? Was it just the fact that you like gaming? 
Um, so growing up, like with um high school and like something like that, I was always trying to fight like find a group that I was a part of. And I felt like growing up, like, you know, yeah, of course it's cool to be a big streamer, uh, crazy donations. Like that's the that's always what everybody wants out of streaming. The dream. But I yeah. feel like that's the dream, obviously. But what I what I strive for is to inspire the people. If I can inspire people to not have a worse childhood like like I did or like, you know, make their life better in the process of doing everything, then that's an easier thing for me. And and the way that I see it is like I was just a kid dreaming the same way they are and look where I am. Like they can do it, I can do it. It's kind of the same thing. Uh, you know what I mean? And so like I the way I see it is I always wanted to have somebody in chat to talk to and when i started streaming like that wasn't ever a thing and um so that's kind of how days. it like started in you know yeah no, i remember those days part yeah. two of the part two of that question which is a funny one is and i think a lot of people enjoy hearing about this one what was the first couple of streams looking like <laughs> what what were the games what was the quality what were, what were we talking so, so we so the very first stream i ever did was actually a three-day stream i don't know if you knew me at the yes i yes you now that you so, said that i just remembered it that was so funny because you actually like you were the yeah, pioneer like, of that so way back then it was a so i just had gotten my 960 graphics card and i had gotten my pc and it was like the first it was in december it was like december of 2015 and i was like this is like the very first time i like did a huge stream like i made my account when i was like 13 14 but like when i started physically streaming every day and stuff like that i was in i was 15 that i had a laptop before that yeah and um and unironically that was an asus laptop which i'm actually sponsored by them now which is very ironic <laughs> but like like when i was starting out like i w i got my pc at my 960 and i was like super hyped to start streaming and i played csgo surf like literally three days in a row like I, w I did a three day stream. Um, I, w I had like an average of 50 viewers, like a crazy stream for my very first stream. Like I had never expected to have a big push of growth because the streams are always super entertaining. It was like rap battles or like there was always something going on in the disc in that, in that server. Like there's people donate. Like it was just, it was always, it was just a crazy stream that I've ever had. Like yeah. just that, that initial welcome to Twitch is what thrived me to like keep going. You know what I mean? I remember that actually inspired me to do my first ever 24 hour stream was hearing you say that you did a 72 and I, I think a 24 hour is manageable, but 72 is just, <laughs> that was just something that completely crossed the line of what was expected at that point in time. That was back in the day where challenges on Twitch and things like that were like kind of the go to. It was like the people were doing yeah. the sleep text to talk where they go to a hotel and put it on text to speech donations and whatnot. Yeah, the, there was like also for me is like in that time I was actually going for the world record of longest stream because back then it was only four days. So when I when I was like very close to it, I was like I think I ended at seventy eight before I got like IP DOS and stuff. <laughs> but like back when back when that happened, like I was super close to beating it. Everybody was like, "You could go one more day, like you could do it." People were donating to me to sleep, like they were telling me to go to sleep. And it was, I just remember that memory being like ingrained in my head and just being like, you know, I can actually do this if I like put my mind to it, you know? Um, and so since then, since that day, like that's what I've been motivated by, like that literal stream. Like, and now I've had even crazier moments on stream the last couple months, but like, like yeah. overall that, that is engraved in my head. Like, yeah, you know, that's what I wanted. You know what I mean? Now, was this, was this, and this is something that I know personally, as, as many of you may or may not know, he used to go by a totally different name. Do you still bring it up or no? Yeah, Does anyone I know that? Yeah. yeah. So he was by, he was by Fatal Skids, Fatal X Skids. And, um, ago. did you keep that account and move that to Gutsy or did you start fresh? Uh, no, this is the same account. Um, okay. I yeah, this is the same account. Um, it's, it's literally, it's so funny because like I still even have it in my bio like used to be Fatal X Kids because I remember the day that I switched my name, I lost a shit ton of followers. Like the day yeah? I switched my name, I lost a lot. Um, people, not not that they hated the name switch, they just didn't remember who I was. Um, like oh. some people even now that I've had such long followings to, like Heal Mike when he had like 30 viewers and I had been in his streams a couple times, like he doesn't remember who I am now. Um, it's just, I think it's just part of like, you know, like changing that name and rebranding yourself into something better you know there's going to be the negatives but overall it's been positive i've been able to build 
my entire brand off of Gutsy Aiden. I've been able to make this whole room and a, a wonderful logo, a mouse pad company. Yeah. Like, out of everything, like it, it's been able to do wonders for having a, a wonderful name. Literally being, literally being like attached to my name because like you know gutsy's my last name and it, it's just interesting to see that somebody who will make this like their fortnite clan and like it's just it, it's hilarious to see how many people like actually put it in their name now even though it's my last name yeah and i and that's yeah not to not to interject i'm so sorry but it is it is impressive i know how that felt as well going from where i used to be corvos to flex chapman and it was yeah. funny too because the sunglasses thing everyone asked about that for a while it actually came from my eyes hurting because i was at the time um, I just left Twitch for Mixer and I, yeah, I quit my job and I put it all my faith and in, in money on Mixer. Like I literally went through my entire savings account and I was doing so many streams on Mixer. If you go back in the day, thank God Mixer's closed, but you could find the VODs with me without my glasses. My eyes started hurting. So I legitimately yeah. thought the best solution was throwing on sunglasses. And when I did, that's when I decided to change the name to Flex Chapman. My Twitch instantly yeah. deteriorated into Flex Chapman, but it's so funny because now I'll have people who come by and they're like, Wait, did you used to go by a different name and you didn't wear sunglasses? <laughs> like, you only play for, and it's so funny to see those people I kind of. I even did that too. I was like, yeah. is that Corvos? Like, <laughs> you fell off for a while. Like, you fell out of, out of, because I would see you all the time on, and then, like, when you switched to Mixer, I had no idea that you switched to music. I just thought you stopped streaming. So, like, you know, yeah. for me, I just kind of like, you know, a lot of the OGs and, like, friends that we've had uh, um, in our little posse growing up on Twitch, like, little Augie still streams. Um, like all those people that I still remember like looking up to when I started streaming like still stream and it's just crazy to see that I have propelled past them and it's in yeah it's, it's so dope to get back to them when I can um, you know I've done like donations to small streamers or people that have impacted me early on like you know what I mean and so yeah, well, it's, it's so really cool because cool, a lot of people from back then who were in in my community, you Harley, you remember Harley? She still streams to this day. Like yeah. uh, a lot of the older Dre. people, Joker, Dre, exactly, Ty Ty, who is now Doctor Logical. He's like a Valorant pro. Like, dude, it's like everyone does their own different thing, and it's so cool to see like everyone still yeah. kind of keep at it. And and the the proof is in the pudding. I mean, you persevered and you found a different path to the top. I think, and I, I want to talk about that after the main questions, but. You did, you did iron out a path to the top that I think was something that nobody expected was. And yeah. uh, like I said, we'll talk about that in a bit. But I wanted to transition into question three because, you know, I actually, when I was tuning into your stream earlier, when I was getting everything set up, there was the jokes about a baby and things like that. <laughs> and uh, yeah. well, not that you guys are talking about, but question number three, I think is an important one because a lot of people who are beginning in content creation don't realize that this is a gigantic factor. But how does streaming and relationships work for you? Not just... It could be girlfriend, could be work, could be family, friendships, because I know it's this taboo thing that a lot of people don't realize is difficult to manage with friendships. You know, I want to hang out, but I have to stream. You know, I have to do this now. I have to create this content. I have to put this video out. How does that work for you in your life? So, yeah, it's actually pretty interesting. Um, my chat actually asked me about it a lot um, with they asked me, like, oh, do you have a girlfriend? I'm like, no, no, I don't. It's so actually when i started pursuing streaming and content creation like full time when i when i announced and went full time in august uh, i got a lot of backlash uh from families and friends like why you quit in college you're you're an idiot like don't you know don't do it yeah um you know and i and i got a lot of backlash uh from my friends too like a lot of my friends dropped me my, a lot of my irls dropped me because they're like oh you're not gonna make it you're you're an idiot like why are you throwing away your life for nothing mm -hmm. and you know i mean it's like then you know the mouse pie business extremely took off in september uh, 10 minute sellout on 700 and then October rolls around 10 minute sellout then uh, December comes around doubled the stock and sold out in two days like just like completely changed my whole life yeah. in four months and like for me the way I saw it was like you know I, I put all my time into this and this is like my friend this is like my my other mm. half and the way I put that together was like if I see this as that much of a value to me then i i need to put this first before anybody else and like it, it even even now to this day I, I like with relationships and stuff i tell them like if i even if i'm talking to anybody or i start talking to somebody i let them know i'm like hey i am a content creator i know that you probably won't be able to understand this yeah and you probably don't know who i am or anything but it doesn't matter i just want to let you know that if i don't reply to you or if i'm not interested or i'm not that i'm gonna be honest with you and it's not gonna it's not gonna go further than that it's gonna be kind of you know at that time i'm be like hey this is how i'm feeling 
I'm a little stressed. I got this to do. I got this TikTok to post, this brand deal to work on, uh, you know, this mousepad drop to work on. Like, there's there's always something for me to do. And so, you know, it, to me, I see it more as that investment. That's a really cool um, way to think about it, treating treating this like your relationship. I think, yeah. that, I think that's a gigantic mindset shift because, you know, even I find sometimes in my life that I, I get to this point where, I look around and I feel like I'm missing out, like this fear of missing out. Your friends are going out to this thing, you know, this this party's happening, this whatever, and you're like in your room, hold up, like here I am again, you know, another day where I'm not doing that stuff. But that's a fundamental sacrifice and mindset shift that makes your content more valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I think also the dedication when it comes to that, it's not just streaming eight hours and calling that dedication. It's 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 building that content around your stream and building that likeness on multiple different platforms to help you grow on tw on Twitch. And like once you do that, like sometimes even when people ask me to go out or do something, it's really hard for me to do it unless I am involved with making a TikTok out of it, unless I'm involved with making something to to benefit myself. And that's a hard mindset to like change your mind to is like that you always have to get something out of it because you're yeah. going to lose time somewhere else. And that that for me was the hardest change. Like now, I OK, my family wants me to eat dinner. I have to wait. I'm eating. Uh, I'm, I'm basically, you know, feeding out on Fortnite. Like I need to like grind a little bit longer. The stream has been too short. Like I need to make it a little bit longer before I go eat. And and sometimes that, that battle can be like challenging since I, yeah. you know, like, you know, what I mean, with my parents and stuff like it's it's a little bit challenging but they understand uh like i can't always be involved like i have to work more than anybody else like uh you know i've watched a couple of podcasts in the bat uh in before about you know if you're going to be a content creator and you want to be like a full-time content creator you need to be that guy that streams every day you need to be that guy that takes it the extra mile you need to be that guy that uh yeah sure your family you're busy whatever um this the guy that owns optic um he, he talked about this in his pod. Yeah, Hex. Hex yeah. talked about this in his podcast that if you want to be that person, a content creator, yeah, sure, you can take a Saturday off. But that streamer that really fucking wants it will will stream that day. Yeah. We'll stream that extra mile. We'll stream every single day for months and months and months. We'll fucking go on that grind. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, that, so the way I see it is like, if I can be that, then I'm going to outwork everybody. You know what I mean? Even if I like take a day off of streaming, which I, do, I haven't in six months, seven months. I haven't I lost a day. Like... I stream every day and I have stuck true to that and that and that's the hardest part you know what I mean um, I think that's so. I think that's honestly exactly the motivation a lot of people need to hear it's hard because you know in that situation myself I have even tried to explain that to my significant other obviously I've been with Liv since I'd known you me and Liv been together for you know yeah. 10 years now and there's times even now where it's like hey can you you know end your stream we need to go to Walmart and get groceries and it's like I kind of can't like you're gonna have to figure that out like those those awkward hiccups that happen where it feels like you have this balance of responsibility but also responsibility yeah. to yourself and your yeah. content and and yeah I, I think i think the best way i balance that is i try to stream later in the night when i know that they're not gonna ask me to do stuff um so like if i if i'm doing something today i already have my content planned out for the night before so i'll stream for like a couple hours and i'll go make tiktoks and then um in the morning i'll just do whatever they want me to do and then it's kind of like the rest of the day is my sous sailing kind of thing i'll post a tiktok since i already have it drafted it doesn't really matter i just hit post and i kind of go out there on my day i'll comment a couple times but that to me that's just i don't really like see it that way you know yeah i gotcha i gotcha so yeah. so that you actually just touched upon what's going to segue perfect into question number four um which i think is a, another great way for people to understand this um with the life of a content creator, we have so many different avenues that we're always looking at, and it's hard to always find time and to make sure that you're hitting all your check marks. So for you, in perfect scenario, let's say a day was to go absolutely perfect, start to finish, maximize 24 hours, what does that day look like for you? Perfect day so, in the life. Like a perfect day, like, oh man, okay. So <laughs> a perfect day, that's, that's hard, because like, you know, a perfect day would be like, if I had every motivation and every like energy and cell in my body to do it, yeah, yeah I would. So, the, so the way I look at it is, I'd wake up like really early, and I would get like website work, emails done first, like because that's like the most boring part, responding to these like brands or like these like because there's like the when you whenever you start getting traction on TikTok, all these like uh, brands will hit you up, like these starting brands will try to hit you up and like oh like 
you know, we'll, you know, we'll pay you this or we'll pay you this to switch off a of Twitch or like, you know, it's just like, they, they, it's just always these emails that you'll get. So you get like all these, you know, like, oh, do I want this? So it, yeah. It, regardless of the point, it's like, you know, get those done first because those are like annoying. And then I move on to like the, the actual merch, uh, like the mouse pad stuff, because that's like the biggest part. I can't, I can't wait to, not to, inter not to interrupt you. I cannot wait to get that mouse pad shit. We're going <laughs> to, we're going to dive into that in a moment. Keep going though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so with the mouse pad stuff, uh, my dad does a lot of work for me. He He's helped me out a lot um, when it comes to that. So if I had all the time in the world, I would definitely be able to run that myself. Uh, but it's damn, it's damn near impossible to make three TikTok, TikToks a day and uh, and then also, like, you know, run the whole, you know, oh, my mouse pad isn't here. What's going on with it? Reply back to the email. Like, get, get customer service out the way, right? That, that's, yeah. like, the hardest part. Customer service, I, I'd be able to do all those and knock that out in the morning, you know what I mean? Like, say I had like four hours to knock that out. And then I'd wake, like, then I'd go on to my next thing, which would be like finalizing content. Usually what I do is I do like an oversee of like my content first. So like, if it's say like my TikTok editor would be like, hey, this video's done for you. And I thought it was a cool, interesting way to do it. Let's throw it on TikTok. I just kind of watch it. I'm like, all right, you can take this second out here. Like this would look better here. And then he does that, sends it back for a final review, and then I send it off to TikTok. Of course. Um, that's usually kind of how it goes next. And that would be like at like nine or eight o'clock-ish in the morning at that point. Like if I can get up at like 5 a.m. and just kind of go to Wow. Okay. Day. So this is real best case scenario. <laughs> yeah. And then by the time that that's done, I have three jobs of the day that I can post. Like I would post one at nine. I post one at like two. And I would post one right before I go live at four. If that was like perfect perfect yeah and then or even later like six or seven because even later at night does better but um and then it then after the stream i'd stream for a couple hours in that six o'clock area four to eight four hour stream ish and then after that would be like make more tiktoks for the next day or film more content for things that i may work in the long run uh maybe take a vod for a youtube video send it off to zane or then talk to my artist for the mouse pads or get on a call with the with the manufacturers or w just any of those things would basically be like my ending part of the day random where tasks, I know, yeah yeah random stuff that i'd need to do and that's before even like myself stuff like laundry and like you know, <laughs> that's, that's that's literally just all business stuff at that point right that's not even like like my own health wise that's just literally the business stuff that i would have to do in a day um and then from there, I, I mean, I'd probably try to get laundry done, clean my room, finish my setup, those things. Those would probably be like the, the end of the day kind of stuff. Um, but th yeah, that's like, that's in like perfect scenario. Like everything gets done in a day. Like that would be perfect. Yeah. But it, it's, it's it just, never works that it's way. impossible. Yeah. It's impossible to, to, for me to do it all like that, you know? Um, but hopefully, you know, one day I'll get to that, that, that rolling there. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I'm with you on that. I actually want to do um, when we get to talking more about TikTok and things like that. I'll I'll throw out my own little input on that because as somebody who doesn't necessarily have the freedom to do that and like to to do content creation and also continue to keep the bills paid and the food on the table, it makes this difference. And maybe there could be, you know, things that you've employed that maximize less time. You know, that makes less time actually equate to much more. I think it's actually, I just noticed on my camera that your lighting is actually chroma, chroma keyed out on my thing. No, your lighting is good, but it's chroma keyed on my thing. I apologize for that. The G is actually the brightest and best looking blue. I just can't understand why it's chroma. Oh, I remember why it's chroma keyed. Let me fix that. Let me fix that. For sure. This, this is a, li a bit late to fix it, but last guest also used green screen, so we had chroma key on for him. Ah, I got Perfect. you, got you. Yes, so we're Wait. back. We're back. We're back now. We'll just cut out the rest of the podcast. We'll start over. I'm kidding. <laughs> so, so number five, uh, the final question of the main five that we ask everybody, who do you draw inspiration from? Like, I know that when you're a content creator, you always watch people and there's someone who you might think is better than you, or maybe people who are also equivocal in your field, pioneers who are doing great things in their own right. And is there some people that maybe like when you like finally find time to relax, if you do find time to relax, you open up YouTube or you open up TikTok or you open up this and you can't wait to see this person's content because it's like what you either aspire to or what you just genuinely enjoy watching. Um, so for me, like the content space has become like extremely uh, dry for me. Uh, I feel like what, what I do is I watch TikTok on my 40 page to get ideas and inspiration. But my friends are who I really watch, like Logan, 
Um, Lo, if you don't, I don't know if you know him. Logan is a an inspiration to many. Uh, he's a he's a close friend of mine. And then I watch like people like Jake and uh, Asian JC and people people that I know on TikTok. Like I have a lot of friends in that space. I made a lot of friends on TikTok, like Arky, Fallen, Brady, Carter. Like I, I, I just talked to a lot of people. And so those are the people that I watch for inspiration. If there's like a trend or something going on, I usually try to comment and say, what's up? You know, I try to be involved without yeah. being involved, if that makes sense. Um, like I, I try to watch from like a distance, but also be friends with them. So that's like the hardest, like like that hardest, like a uh, thing like that. Like an example, like some people will think, like, oh, he's not talked to me in a while. Like he's not fit, real, or like it's just it's just hard because yeah. I like, balance so much. Um, but I feel like when I watch streams, like genuinely, I watch Ludwig. Like Ludwig is someone who I love. Yeah, up to. he's good. Yeah, Ludwig. Ludwig started at the same time I did, and um, last year, and like he took off because he had all the right connections, all the right content, all the right ideas um and he is someone who i kind of look up to when it comes to content wise um you know what i mean so yeah no that's, I, don't know. I got you there i mean the thing is this like i for example i don't watch any tv i don't do anything like that usually if i'm in a moment where i have some time it's always going to be like a youtube or like maybe a couple minutes on tiktok or like whatever else so i usually yeah. try to see if there's anyone who stands out to you and you definitely shout out quite a few uh, really phenomenal creator, so I'm sure would appreciate that kind of recognition because it's easy to not realize that you're appreciated until you hear it from your peers, you know? Of course, yeah, yeah. Like, Logan, um, Logan's one of those people that, like, for when I started, so he started streaming, uh, like, seriously back in May. And um, so I had just had done my, like, little Twitch stream uh, for giving away a keyboard, and then I was working at Fire Up at the time. And, like, covid started to go um like crazy back in february yeah, like right on yeah. march around march um and then i i didn't get laid off but we were on a like a break at work and right when i went back we got basically sent back home again and i was like you know what screw this I, i'm gonna transform my content so i was already getting traction on tiktok at the time i i had like i got like forty thousand followers in two days yeah and i was like really snowballing so I started uh, transforming my content, keep making stuff original, and my Twitch stream started to kind of naturally grow. Started playing with a bunch of people. That's when Fall Guys era came out. Uh, Fall Guys was like uh, like a really good era for my stream. A lot of uh, supporters, a lot of people that like really enjoyed watching me. Um, and that was like a really good time for me. That that Fall Guys era segued me into where I'm at now. Um, a lot of the same viewers come back. A lot of the people loved my stream. Yeah. A lot of people like looked up to me and now we're you know on the way to 300k on tiktok and that and that's that in itself is like an accomplishment itself um i think a lot of people neglect followers on tiktok and they neglect the uh the the skill that goes into it and so i feel like like with that that's how i like grew and that's how i like gained the motivation um with logan telling me to go back and stream and he just told me like you know what this is like you have this time like just put all you got into this streaming thing right now and I was able to go full time because of it. Um, so that that, that really pushed me, yeah, to get to where I'm at. Um, yeah. So that breaks us through the five questions, which means that I selfishly get to start digging into a lot of the stuff that I think uh, a lot of us kind of have questions about, right? Okay. Um, yeah. Knowing you before and after, it's such yeah. a massive dynamic shift of the kind of person. And you always had that tenacity and you always had that forward looking mindset. Even back yeah. even back when I just remember how it was always idea, 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 like always spitting out that kind of creativity. When was the moment that you truly realized kind of like, holy shit, this is happening? Like what did that look like for you? Um so <laughs> so you're saying like when I realized like I could like quit my job is what you're saying? Like to go in, into this full time? Yeah, yeah. So or, like that, or just when you realize that your content bypassed what was just normally like, because there's like anyone can stream any day and get like their followers or get like their subs or whatever. But when you fully realize that your content had evolved to a point where it was attracting massive views, maybe a first big uh, TikTok or so, maybe something so like yeah. that. So my my very first TikTok that like really transformed my channel uh, was actually a room hacks video. Um, it was back in early June. I made a video called Room Hacks about the, the lamp that's actually right there. 
<laughs> yeah, I see it. That lamp right there. That video blew up, and the reason I still have it in my room today is just to show me that like anything's possible. The whole that lamp right there got me like twenty thousand followers in a day. Like wow. I got a, a massive amount of support after that video. And not only that, room hacks like that that series on TikTok is still known as a meme in my channel, is still known as like a huge thing. And it is one of the most viewed videos on my channel. And a lot of brands wanted to pay me to put their product in there. I got a lot of brand deals off of that, that series. Um, I got a lot of recognition for that series. Um, and and it's crazy to see that like that one series transform my content because I made style videos similar to that. And every time that I've made a style video similar to that style, but in a different niche, like say it was like a different, like a different word to start off the, the video, it, it has always done well. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's nuts. Like I remade uh, the revamping my video, my, my setup series. Like that was literally the last couple of weeks uh, has gained almost 2 million views in like a week's time. Yeah, I've watched nearly uh, all of them. They're awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And th that style of video that intro with the the different that that's what room hacks used to look like and so when i when i did that very first initial video that video actually has 10 over 10 million views to this day and it still it actually still gains like 200k views a month wow and uh on, on tiktok and that and that's pretty interesting to me um and i still even go back to those those comments and read some you know you can tell that it was on the 40 page um of course and you know it's just it's just really interesting to see that that is the pivotal moment of like where my channel started growing. Uh, I, I started posting more and more TikToks. Like I started pumping out more shit. And that week that I posted room hacks, I posted like uh, things in my setup that I can't live without. Like those things, those like three videos over had over 4 million views in a three days time. Like wow, each one, each post, I was just posting them and they were just banging every time I hit on the on that time. And like, it was interesting to see that the algorithm has changed since then. And, um, but when I posted those three, they were banging each time, each yeah. one, each one was blowing up. And so I started streaming around that time and I was getting like 30 to 20 viewers. Um, and that, that was like a good, like standard, like that was a good start. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, and so that was when I kicked the ball and now I'm just kind of letting it slowly roll. And I, and I don't need, a big jump anymore I, I feel like if i get like 20 30 000 views a video that's steady growth for me i, I don't need like you know what i mean yeah there's a video little flop some videos that won't you know it's just it's just how it is you know what i mean and um you know it just it just depends on what what goes on and i usually look at a video and i see if it, it does bad i don't ever take it down i just leave it and let it go and be like all right that video is bad it, let's roll on there's another video that might be better and and that's the way you got to take TikTok. like yeah there's going to be a down point and there's also going to be a really good point um yeah. and that comes down to the content you make and like with me like i will the video and i know it's going to good video it does well and i know there's a video that i'm like oh, i kind of forced to post this like i don't know how well it's going to do but we'll see um so it's just it's just luck you know um so yeah. i think i think a lot of it's luck but i think you've also proven that it's not luck because the amount of quality that goes into even just a 15 second video from you is it's it's obvious that there's eyes on it every step of the way it's not just like a because there's some people who just like they record someone falling gets a million views whatever it's like you obviously are going through each second maximizing it to make sure that it is the best 15 seconds you can put out right then and there of that type of content that yeah, actually go ahead. yeah i was gonna say that's like the almost like the definition of insanity like when it, you you get to that point where every second matters in a TikTok, uh and, and then that's like how you kind of go into this like loop like oh damn this 15 seconds isn't good enough let me try to make it better you know yeah, what i mean and that, yeah. that's kind of how it is so no and that actually what i, I kind of wanted because you touched upon it a little bit before mentioning things like the algorithm and whatnot i think there's been a few when you talk to people who are also trying to achieve the same goals, everyone has this, like, this way that they think things should work. You mentioned one of them, which brought it to my mind, of like, hey, if your video doesn't do well, delete it and repost it. Like, at a different time, try to beat the algorithm. Or some people will say, don't use hashtags or use hashtags. Or some people will say, you know, um, post at this time specifically because that's going to hit a certain margin. There's a lot of things that need to be debunked about TikTok. It's obvious you have a pretty good grasp on the algorithm. 
What are some just simple maybe like three do's and definitely three don'ts? And I think that the deleting and reposting is an obvious example of a don't, in my opinion. Yeah, um, like and even and I'm not I'm not an expert on the algorithm, and I know there's people that know more than me. Um, it it literally just comes down to common sense. Uh, like they, you got like this is this is the hardest part about TikTok and algorithms and stuff like that is that no one knows what it actually does or what it really does besides people that actually know TikTok and people that really know that kind of thing or do experiments and actually mess around with the uh, algorithm and stuff like that understand it more than i will um but the best the best way i would say to grow is make content that's unique for what you want to post but what i see is is that youtube shorts does better than TikTok when it comes to views uh especially right now and what i've been doing is i've been taking my videos that i that i that do well on my TikTok say they're like a game clip or something like that. Cause right now TikTok is technically saturated. Oh, now it is at least because yeah. every, all these content creators like, yo, TikTok's the way like, but here's the thing though. It's saturated in the wrong way. It's saturated with people with pity content. It's saturated people with streaming. It's saturated these people that are creating content that really isn't content. It's follow my Twitch, get off of TikTok. Yeah. And that that is the worst mindset to be in. Uh, like. Yeah, it's cool to shout out your chat, your Twitch every once in a while, but to gain an audience, you need to get an audience on TikTok first. I didn't stream much when I started out. That's a really good and, mindset. And like, you gotta understand that like, there's an audience there. It's not an, a platform to move your audience. It's a platform to grow a platform to then get people to like you, then to get them to watch your stream. And a lot of people, what I notice is they'll go and they'll show a picture of their setup and be like, yeah, I'm a streamer, I'm a small streamer follow me and it's like shit don't do that yeah <laughs> <laughs> don't do that like that's not I, as soon as i see that swipe i think a lot of people does a lot of people do and like it's it's the worst because it see it gives this like mindset that all streamers are just begging and it, it's terrible it's terrible it gives this like very bad offset to streamers um and another thing i noticed is if you're making series like it, the reason why i blew up in the beginning is because not only was I setting, like, was I making a banger video, but people saw my video do well, and I made a trend. I made it three trends within two months on, on my side of TikTok. And room hacks, everybody started doing that. Every, like, literally, the moment I, that video blew up, I, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50 vi videos of the same exact idea, but different things in their room, blew up for, like, a month and two months. And if everybody was like watching my content back then, they would know. Like you go through your forty page room hacks, room hacks. Like it was. It, that's why I blew up in the first place. An example: Zachology right now, the kid that goes like, you know, you're free, so free, literally so free. That that guy. Yeah. The reason he's blowing up is because everybody's using his video. Everybody's using him. Everybody's like making it a meme. People were. It was a good trend, right? And that's and that's part of it is jumping onto trends or becoming finding old ideas that you can reinvent into new new things like people i've seen recently like an example i've had and and a thing that i'm gonna start doing soon is i wanted to do like celebrity read reads mean tweets but it's like tiktokers read mean comments but it was oh. like an snl skit like so, like those things can work as like reinventing content but in a different way yeah and those do work um, and I've seen I've seen a lot of TikTokers do that kind of thing where they they'll like go like you know they'll take like a skit from like three four years ago on SNL and they'll be like yo this is a good idea like an example someone did, did a TikTok bachelorette and it seventy million views over yeah. four videos like those things blow up because they're they're things that are part of the app and they include people that are in the app versus telling them to move to another platform that they don't know and because a lot of, of a lot course. of these younger kids that are on TikTok don't know what Twitch is. Um, Sure, there's a good majority of it, and I have a lot of majority viewers that come from from TikTok. But overall, they don't know what it is, and so I think, I think a lot of the mean comments are what would be hilarious to make as a video. And I, those those are like the things I'm thinking of, like ideas that I could think of for myself. And, and, and like, and I've done, I've read like Instagram DMs as a video, 25k, like that's a good 25k video that I did. Yeah. But it's not like it's not like viral, like viral worthy because you need viral content to boost your followers but you need follower content to keep them to stay to like your personality so it's a, it's a good balance 
consistency not just consistency but consistency and um likable content which means like for me like i've donated to twitch streamers and that was like a likable following content for me like someone has been like oh i really like him he's donating to these streamers like why wouldn't i go watch him like those things are like why people will follow you and why people will will be interested in your content you know what i mean wholesome and fun yeah exactly yeah, and I think I think that's a lot of why people fail on TikTok is right when they go into the TikTok, they they hear from these streamers that, oh, it's the wave, like you need to start posting on it. And they, they don't know what to post. So they just post, I have my setup, come follow me. Like it's just, it, yeah. they don't understand. So that, that's why a lot of people fail. And then they get off the app because they don't understand why it's not working for them. And they give up early. They give up way too early is the problem. Yeah, I mean, even, and, even, uh, I'm, even I'm guilty of that a little bit, I'd say, because you know when this is kind of where i was going with everything with you specifically you paved a path that wasn't necessarily a path before which was like yeah you did TikTok and then it translated beautifully into your twitch but you did it organically you didn't do the, like the hey my stuff's cool follow me on twitch like pushing it over but there's this weirdness where it's like um it almost feels like that's the way to do it now and like you have all these fake prophetic people who are like like, oh, you think streaming on Twitch is grinding? Yeah, how about focusing on, like, putting out the stuff? And then they just put out nonsense. And, like, those are the same people who might have, like, a 1,000 followers. They might have a 1,200. But they're falling in this washing machine cycle. Was I yeah, – yeah. go ahead. Yeah, where it's, like, they'll post something. And then they'll figure out, like, oh, that worked. And then they post it again. And it doesn't work as much because someone's already – someone's already seen this and like here's the thing like an example is pax fn everybody made fun of him it was a trend to make fun of him right yeah but for him and i, I actually know him because he bought a mouse out of mine and it's been in this set us before he he made pity tiktoks and everybody made fun of him for it but hey he everyone made fun of him right but at the same time bad exposure good exposure and bad exposure are the same thing and big brands talk about this yeah. all the time jake paul talks about this all the time people that are influential and that are big in people's mouths still to this day are are still talking about how negative things help them an example example pepsi right pepsi yeah. when they got a when they've gotten a huge backlash from when they posted one of the commercials and it was like a very controversial commercial right they posted that not just because they wanted to be controversial but they knew that if they got bad recognition that people at the end of the day would still think about getting a pepsi at the end of the day still getting a mountain dew at the end of the day no no matter what it is if you if their name free real estate is, in your head it, yeah exactly and you still want to go watch him even if you're going to type hate comments in this chat and maybe you know he doesn't recognize your message so you donate 100 bits you just literally gave him a dollar yeah in that mind and so that's why a lot of like i reckon like i reckon i recognize all this like problems on tiktok is people saying like oh like follow me stuff like that well it worked he was averaging like 400 viewers a stream because everybody would come in and hate on him yeah and they don't realize what they're doing they're feeding into him winning he's winning he was winning he was yeah. literally getting like 200 300 people a stream and like blowing up and now that twitch is seeing a lot of traffic to this channel they're going to keep recommending him and yeah. they're not going to see his TikTok because they don't know. You know what I'm saying? So people that were making fun of him, he's actually kind of fucking smart, if you think about it. Even though he did yeah. pity content and it's like a terrible thing to do and don't do it, he almost made a niche for himself. <laughs> I don't know. You're making a really good case for it. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I don't like the kid, but I'm just saying he's smart. I'm not going to – I'm yeah. recognizing what he's saying. You know what I mean? Like, I recognize what he did to blow up. Now, is that going to have longevity for his channel? Probably not. Are people going to like him? probably not but in the short term he's doing well so regardless of what hate you get or whatever honestly i like what people hate on my tiktoks it helps my algorithm and no reg regardless of what people say about me i don't give a shit like you gotta develop that mindset when you're on tiktok because even if people come and hate on you your your video is going to get pushed more so fuck them like what, what are they going to do tell you that you're you bank dog shit content but you're posting they're they're commenting and following you yeah so like the way i look at it is just say fuck it and let them hate on you let them post dumb shit in their comments because then you can make videos out of it it's free content free real yeah stuff. yeah <laughs> free content it's like who cares that they hate on you i've had many people that tell me all the time that, that my content's stale or it won't ever go anywhere but look where i'm at 
I still sell mouse pads consistently. I still do well on Twitch. I still am able to average good viewers on my TikToks. Like it doesn't matter what people say because the more that they hate on you, the better you're going to do. And, and it, yeah, hate can suck and it will, will, will mess with you. But if you get this mindset and I know not everybody's mindset is the same as like as mine, but and it is tiring. I totally understand. But at the same time, if you take that and use that as like like longevity, you can see like, damn, these people are hating on me, but th there's going to be that like 50 people, 100 people that don't hate on me and that support me. Because if 100 people sub to me, that's enough to semi live. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and that's the way like streamers, if you're only like full time and stuff like that, you're looking at things like numbers wise, you're looking at that. And if 100 people come in and they're like, oh, like, you know, I like you. Like, I, I fuck with you. Like, I like your content. And some kid, you know, donate 10,000 bits. That's you just you just made more than you made at a job in three hours than you did at eight hours in a job correct you see what yeah. i'm saying like i if i can average like 10 15 subs a day i that's that's well enough for me you know what i mean and that and that is like perfect you know what i mean i don't need to have these crazy numbers even though i do and i love my community for it there's never going to be a time where i'm like upset at not making subs because yes it'll affect you but if you affect it you let you like it let uh, if you let it affect you early then you're not going to see the longevity in staying on twitch it's a survival thing um it's just how long you can survive until the next big person comes in your stream and the next you know the next you know what i mean it's it's just yeah. how it is um it's a survive it's a it's a balancing act some days you'll get no subs some days you'll get like 400 subs you never know you, you know really I mean? you really don't know i remember there was a point in time in which i like i had recently made my transition from mixer and things were very slow for a while i mean i i'd slow is such a it's hard to compare slow you have to base it on your own content right you know your own numbers every content creator who's worth their weight in salt they know their own numbers so when i was on mixer i was getting abnormal amounts of follows over 100 follows a day like i was growing like rampantly unfortunately mixer yeah. shut down the transition rate to twitch wasn't that high but when I was at that point in time from Twitch, I was getting good amounts of follows, but it still felt slow to me compared to what I was used to. And then I had a month or two where I legitimately got 300, 400 subs. Things were going amazing. Things were great. The conversation started to pop up full time or not. And then it's that recognition that your content's still valuable, but a luck point doesn't mean that's your full time now because you can yeah. bid it all on that moment. And then once that moment isn't there next month and you're sitting there with an empty wallet and you're looking silly, you kind of gave it too much. And I'm not saying that it's all about the wallet because it's not about it. But when you're a content creator at this point, like you are, um, soon to be I am, you have to think about the ability that, okay, can I get my dog dog food this month? Can I get my heat on? Can I get my stuff on? As long as I can hit those yeah. check marks, then I can sacrifice more. And you sacrifice yeah. more, sacrifice more until they're no longer sacrifices but gains, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, and that's and that's uh, one of the, oh, my camera freeze. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Sorry. Now you're all good. I don't know. There we go. Let me fix that. Um, here. Sometimes the camera likes to freeze, but um, so basically, a lot of what people, what I, what I've seen and and stuff like this, it comes to a point where not asking for it is when you get it, when you receive it the best. Yeah. And I, and the way I see it is, if I never ask for a sub, I can offer the 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 extension, the open and right. I'm never going to not say, hey, you can use Twitch Prime. Like I'm never not going to say that. But I'm not also going to be a way. I'm not going to push it onto somebody to where they feel like they have to. Of and I, even I say, and in my streams, I say, "Yo, if you want to use Twitch Prime, you don't even have to use it on me. You could literally use it on a, a friend of mine. Go use it on this person if you want to like their content more. It doesn't. It doesn't matter how you yeah. present it. It's that if people know deep down you're a good guy or a good person, they're going to support you regardless. And I have a lot of people in my chat that are the same way that see me that uh, that care about me and that want to see me succeed. And regardless of my viewer count number, if they're supporting me, it doesn't matter at that point. Because I've already hit partnership. I've already hit the biggest milestone, right? But now it's continuing the, that growth and being able to, you know, jump even further, get signed to a bigger place, uh, do bigger things. You know, that's that's part of it. You know what I mean? You seem like a phase guy. Yeah, I mean, I went for phase. Yeah, I went for the phase five challenge. But, you know, it's like... For me, I, I could see it anyway, you know what I mean? 100 Thieves, phase, whatever. Yeah. But like for me, the way I see it is like, if I can stay as gutsy Aiden as long as possible without needing an organization, then that would be the best. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole point is thinking about it supplemental. 
you'd have to think yeah. about it as supplemental, not as like an actual avenue. Because a lot of people think that like, if I get there, then I'm famous from there. But the thing is, you want to have it your own and have that as a supplemental asset to your growth and not your whole growth plan. I would I would rather be known for better content on YouTube than to be just known that guy that joined 100 Themes. And, and I yeah. think, or, or that guy that joined FaZe or that guy that, uh, you know, does well. Like I'd rather do well on my own for an org to come to me than to beg to be in an org that may or may not get me somewhere. And, and, and I think a lot of people think that as soon as they get into an org, um, you know, like it's good for them. They are set for life. Like it's not always that way. And there's been phase members that have joined that have left and not been able to be content creators anymore. And, and that is a huge deal. Like imagine you, you're going, everything's going right. And then you just aren't able to make enough to live anymore. That's, that's the scary thing. And I, I mean, I even like get nervous about my future. I think like four years ahead, is this still going to be a thing? Where am I going to be at in four years? Am I going to be like triple my size? Am I going to be in the same avenue? Am I going to be, you know, making more money? Like, am I going to be making the same? And and I think and I think this is also another thing that you have to think about when you think of longevity of Twitch. It's not looking too great right now, yeah. if I'm honest. Um, but overall, that's why you got to build other social medias because if one avenue or one revenue avenue closes down you have four others or five others and regardless if that's investing or regardless if that's in you know merch sales or if that's in mouse pads or if that's in you know mouse whatever pads. it is this, this word this word is is killing me this mouse pad because i'm itching to i'm itching to unwrap the the present of a conversation that is this whole mouse pad thing so <laughs> yeah if you can give me the brief of where this started what happened and why it is such a thing where i have at least, and I wish I was joking, at least three followers on TikTok who are named Gutsy Aiden's Mousepad 3, 4, 5. <laughs> like, I have people who are following me who found my content organically with that name, and it's like, it's everywhere. So what is this whole thing about? So back in um, August, I made a mousepad design, and the mousepad design was um, like, it, here, I can show you what it looks like. rendition but this is what the like the design looked like yeah so this is like what it looked like okay that's fire right so then so i had this on stream moments which was a like a dropship website um that a lot of streamers use for merch stuff like that um and i within like a couple days it was like maybe in total it was like a week three weeks i was streaming every day right i was taking it seriously i was still working my job but i was also like streaming every day and maintaining tiktok uh, stuff yeah because we're on quarantine at the time and then it was like oh snap i'm their best seller in two weeks three weeks as soon as they released the product uh i was the highest seller on their list wow um and and i i they called me the king of mousepads that's what they said Mousepad King. I know some people will put it the emote in chat. That was like the the meme behind it. Yeah. Um, and that was like the meme. So, you know, started realizing there was a bunch of issues with this. One, I was getting scuffed for money uh, for what I was what I was doing, uh, how much product I was pushing. I was getting really scuffed. So I and how much one, were they cutting? Do you mind if I ask? I use I use Teespring, were, so I know how it is. I mean, they're charging like. So, yeah, so they were so they were charging with with stream moments. I, I probably won't be able to go into my manufacturing stuff, but with, no, no, no. With the with the with the stream moments one, they were selling them for I think thirty five, but I was getting four dollars. Wow, for pad, and I sold seven hundred. And so <laughs> I I mean that's a good chunk of change, but not nearly what I could make, right? So I saw the potential there. So then when I and they took four weeks to ship so like and i was like on calls with them i'm like yo you guys need to like hurry this up like why is everybody waiting this long like what's going on and you know what i mean yeah like why is this taking four weeks to turn a mouse pad and send it you know what i mean and so i was like you know what you know what screw this i'm gonna i'm gonna leave them close my store and i'm gonna do a drop in september i found a manufacturer i ordered them all to my house and me and my dad boxed them all night wow and literally i did the drop day and we sold out and I was like, that's when I knew I was like, that's this is it. This is the mousepad thing. This is what's gonna go on. And 
not only that i started a hashtag with that in september uh called gutsy aiden mousepad and that that hashtag has almost 7 million views on tiktok <laughs> and yeah and so they really blew up as a product and everybody knows who they are who what they are um tiktok has really been pu pushing it for some reason and every time i have a drop it gets to the trending page and people just use their tech videos with that hashtag now um so it's like not just like tech videos but it's also like my mouse pad promotion it's like it, it's endless promotion for me yeah. um and so so i i almost kind of dominated a market in that scene um you made a market so that I, yeah i almost made a market on tiktok because talk tiktok didn't have mouse pads right there was mouse pads but not mouse pads you see what i'm saying yeah like there was people that had them and like cool ones and stuff and that's really cool but then right as soon as i made that and i made that push so i sold two drops i did one in october and one in september right and i sold more mouse pads in two months than steel series the brand itself wow in two months and i doubled their number um in two months then and so after i started realizing that i started just like coming up with new designs coming out with drops trying to get them consistent uh i i worked Inter really interjecting to... interjecting really quick yeah has your mouse pad revenue beaten your content creation revenue oh by tenfold wow yeah. fuck wow yeah <laughs> uh, I, I think i think content like t twitch yes i've had some amazing moments and I've had some crazy moments and everything, and I'm very blessed to have what I have on Twitch. But mouse pads are why I went full time. Wow! Um, holy shit! Man. I, I I was able to go full time with mouse pads alone, um, but I wanted to like have that content feature, have those you know things like that, and I just invested all of that. Like my business gets fully invested into itself. I never I don't, I don't ever touch that money. My Twitch money is what I live off of, and my mouse pad money is what I reinvest. So That's I never crazy. really, I really never touch that, and I and I never want to ever like brag or boast or what I have because I'm very blessed to be in the position I am, and I never want to go out of my way to like, you know, force it upon somebody. I have this much. I I, I never will do that. No, it and doesn't so, seem that way. And um, so once I did that, I did a drop in December. We doubled the stock, so we did a thousand in October, seven hundred in September. October we had we, we had a ten minute sellout on October. Jesus man. Um, yeah we did it on stream it was like it was a, a amazing thing it was for my birthday like i i did i dropped like right around my birthday and it was like a crazy stream i got partnered in november and then um in december like in november i got one of my biggest donations like um there's a person in my chat named rain falls he he donated like five hundred thousand bits to me wow in, that month, in november yeah and so then that was crazy and then right at the end of december right before january um grady that's been in my chat he donated i think like 400 it was 400 subs in total Jesus and um brother. no it was like it was 600 subs cheers to you man that's insane <laughs> and so yeah yeah so like and, and you know and it's all down to like my support on twitch and my support with that that i've been able to like do that and 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 with september though the september drop i was really risking a lot because um i bought I used all my money I'd saved up my entire life from from working at Old Navy to Whole Foods to Fire Up to buy all the mouse pads. I wasted all my money. I had I had like ten ten dollars left in my bank account, Jesus. and I I just sent it and it uh, and it paid it off. Worth it. It was it paid off, but it was the most scary purchase of my life because I said if they don't sell out or you know something happens, I'm screwed. You know, like I I had to go. I've got to go work a normal job again. I gotta like double my hours. Like I'm gonna be so fucked if i if this doesn't sell out and luckily every drop is sold out so far and i'm beyond blessed for that you know and, and i you know there's no other there's no other thing to say but you know like i'm super blessed and i'm just gonna keep making mouse pads and me keep dominating that market and keep making cool shit for people to buy and you know that's just that's what i what i want to do and um well i got this piece yeah. of shit corsair mouse pad on my desk how where where, where, do, my, where do i get one of these where do i get one of these aiden ones that's, so uh, the drop is in february the next one is and it's on gutsyaden.com it's literally just gutsyaden.com it's really gotcha, easy yeah um but the uh and the next drop will be in february don't have a set date quite yet We're waiting on the manufacturer to give me back another date but once we once we get all the pads made for the drop because we usually make them pre-hand yeah and we just have like a set amount um and we have them all uh set up then we'll we'll uh we'll let you know when the date is you have the I'll, design made 
Oh yeah, I have a couple of them. I can't show them because okay, what happens of course. is people try to steal them. Um, but they, you know, the one that I showed you before. Yeah. It's it's that design but different colors. Oh, that's dope. No, yeah, that's fire. It's, it, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. We're bringing back the OG design for this for this drop, and uh, yeah, it's been really really cool to see like how much I've been able to impact just TikTok and like mousepad scenes and like. Like, you know, people took inspiration from me, Mousepad Company. I'm, I've been able to make that bridge to connection there, have friends with them, and, like, you know, figure out, like, yo, that's cool. Like, you know what I mean? To figure out, like, how much I can do for, for other businesses and help them, um, you know, to sell how much I've been able to sell. And so it's also, like, a balancing act because all these people are like, oh, I want to start a Mousepad Company. Like, it's – they just see me and they see the success and they want to they wanna replicate that. But that's why I don't really – I don't share, like, you know, the deep – facts into it because it's like people will just go out of their way to try to invest and do it you know what i mean so um and right now a lot of people are just making stream elements pads and they're they're copying my designs almost damn near exact really and so yeah it, it, like literally the last month i think i've seen like 15 or 20 accounts like with different like a something than mouse pad and it's just a stream elements mouse pad will liquefy it in photoshop Wow. And it just looks just like mine. It, or it's tried to look like mine. Um, That's crazy, uh, man. Yeah. So, but the thing is, is like what they don't know is that they can't replicate this exactly because all these lines are drawn by hand by my artist. Um, my artist does all this stuff by hand. He's uh, he's incredible. He does all my emotes. He's done. He's drawn everything by hand when it comes to like the lines on these. You can see like all of these lines are all drawn by him by hand. And so a lot of a lot of it is not just like liquefied in photoshop it's like a real artist drawing it um so it's really hard to replicate um and it my style is so different from other people i feel like that's why a lot of people try to copy it now it's because people can't get them and they're only in drops and so it, it's hard it's hard to get that like you know that balance um to between drops and selling them full time um that's like the hardest part so yeah no, I, I run into that same issue myself. I've always used, I've like, merch was a gigantic thing for me. And I spent actually a couple of months, like, really looking into, like, merchandising design. Not just, like, the same thing that you see every single person do where they get a coffee cup with their just logo thrown on it. But, like, actual merch designs. I really looked around at different companies to do it. And I ended up with Teespring. But all of my designs, after I put them on, somebody takes them and then c claims mine for copyright. This, yeah. has ha this has happened like three times and it's really frustrating because my favorite hoodie design, I actually ordered one of them because it got taken down twice by Teespring saying that there was copyright because someone did that. It's very frustrating when your IP gets taken from you and just right under your feet. That's the way the internet yeah. functions though. Yeah, the way I see it is that if it's on my own website, they can't claim copyright on me. And so, and they can't, and the thing is it's, it's not intellectual law because my artist draw, drew everything. And I have I have legal documentation of mine being copyrighted to my artist and I. So to me, it doesn't really matter what people try to do because even if they copyright me, I can send like uh, uh, you know um, letters to take down their website. I've actually I'm actually in contact with people on Stream Elements that um, like the, the the CEO the merch uh, section of them. I'm really close with them, and from last time you know since I was working with them before, and. Um, you know, they are disheartened to see that I left because I was bringing a of lot of course, traffic yeah. to them. Um, but they told me I wasn't a big enough creator back then to get the program or be a part of the program. So wow. I just said, you know, I'm, I'm out. Even after and, you sold out all their things. <laughs> like, yeah. That's yeah, crazy. I wasn't a big enough creator to, or I was too high risk to leave me as a, as, as a, like to promote me, um, to do a contact with me. And at the time I was like really, really excited because I love stream moments. I use it still to this day. Um, and they were like, yo, we'll do like a partnership with you. We'll like make a TikTok and try to get involved because stream, stream labs is very involved. They follow me. They, they, every time I do a mouse pad sale, they like, they put like a King emoji. Like they're always like involved with my content and like stream moments isn't, but stream labs is, you know what I mean? So like stream labs is really, really cool. They're, they're really cool people. Um, yeah, but you know, I, I've always wanted to like try to be a part of something bigger, um, for myself because right now yeah i pull i pull a decent amount of numbers on twitch but i feel like there's just i i feel like there's so much more growth to be had for me and like for me like i feel like i, I can do so much better does that make sense it, it's just hard, it it's, hard. No, it it's always like this pressure on me like oh you have because like this people come to my stream like oh you have like 70 viewers like that's like 
you should be so much bigger. You have 20k followers. Like, but that's the problem with Twitch. Like, you can have a million followers and only have 20k people join your stream. You well, know well I mean? also, well, also, the thing about Twitch is the viewer count fluctuates so much that you, that's never a number that you can fully base your analytics off of. Because I've seen you hit the multiple hundreds, and I've also seen you at the lower amounts, but it doesn't mean your content is less good that day. It just means that maybe people are sleeping that day. Maybe there's an event going on that day. Maybe there's something in people's lives that they don't have the time to watch a Twitch channel, right? Best yeah. case scenario is every one of your followers is waiting and ready to watch your content. As soon as you press go live, they're in there chatting and they're writing and they're subscribing and following, but that's just not the case. They're humans. Yeah, yeah. On the other side, they are humans who chose to watch content or don't choose to watch content. And that's fine, right? I think yeah. analytically, the only thing that you can behold yourself to is your own results, your own growth, and what you hold your own standards to. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, for me, like, the way I see it, right, is, like, if I am growing, regardless if it's <clears throat> more followers every day, or regardless if I'm growing when it comes to, like, TikTok followers, as long as I'm gaining in followers and I'm not losing... That's still a gain. It's still a W yeah, either way. Of course. Um, you know, what I'll notice and what I've seen in trends is in a low month like January, where everyone has already subbed in December or they, you know, spent a lot of money giving out to streamers in December. Uh, I notice like January and February are low months for Twitch. And then when it comes to like March and, and things like that, they're high numbers for Twitch. Um, and, and so that's why like a lot of people will will start to grow and start to uh, start to carry themselves further um and there's things that you can do to help yourself with that it's just for me um getting my mouse pads more involved and right now it's the hardest part is the manufacturing um like you know taiwan and in covid restriction and trying to get like the actual physical pads to america is the hardest part um, yeah and, and so like even that's just like logistic stuff you know what i mean but like once i'm able to do that i can do like things where once i had a sub goal we release a only pad for the people that were in the stream like you can do those kind of things where you can like let them exclusive stuff yeah exclusives and have that more interactive with my chat where i can make things more interactive with them to make them come back like oh i have a mouse pad of yours where we were on that sub goal and it was crazy do you remember that i was like yeah you know like that's that's what happened and that's what stream moments was for me because back then i would release a pad when we hit a sub goal so like, and it helped to my growth early on. Um, and I did sub only mouse pads where you could like, they could only buy it if they were a sub or like, you know what I mean? That that was like the cool thing where if people get the subs or we hit a goal, yeah. we could just like kick it on and they'd buy that and I turn it off after the stream. And that would be like why it'd be really cool. Um, and then for me, whenever I do a mouse pad drop or whatever, I hit like 800, 900 viewers. And it's, it is always a fun, it's always a fun thing um, for that. Cause then we do giveaways and stuff like that. And it's, it's really cool to hang out with everybody. But I'm sure that has to be cool because I'm sure it's like it's not just Twitch at that point. Then you're getting your TikTok fam. Then you're getting your other social media fam all interested in this big event that is what you've built. This mouse pad, you know, this this gigantic mouse pad uprising. And I think that it's really kind of crazy because it's almost as if I've seen you personally from my own eyes as this person who made TikTok work from and made this stuff work from. But this mouse pad thing's obviously been under my own nose, right? I I didn't understand what the whole hype about it was, but this has been your main ticket. This has been your thing that really shown out. And mind you, as someone who sells merch myself, I know that it could be hit or miss. I still get merch sales, but just like you said, I use a website that does it all for you. You get a barely cut of a profit. And for me, the merch wasn't about the money. It was just about getting my name out there. But you clearly have done something and taken it into your own hands and made it this tycoon of... of success but a way to connect with the community that no other streamer or any content creator has done this is all of a sudden its own thing that people are going to try to replicate eons from now on it's probably going to be like oh this person's headband or this person's watch or this person's snapback or whatever your mouse pad thing has absolutely floored this kind of community and, and major name something that nobody else has done that has to feel some kind of like like some kind of special in a way that like i i wouldn't even be able to keep my composure i'd go everywhere i'd probably give people business cards like hey yeah i'm the mouse pad guy <laughs> yeah it's yeah the the hardest part is like 
people will like you know will bash you and like you know it, it's like i don't even promote like my mouse pads like i will say like you know like you dude this would be cool in your setup but i will never be like you know buy a mouse pad like like buy one buy one. like i'm not like a m over a merch seller and and what's crazy is like even people on tiktok have recognized this and i've seen a couple of videos of talking about my 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 marketing strategy because it's super unique um with mine is like shadow marketing and and i and i and i call it that because i never ask someone to buy a product but i show every feature of the product and i love how it looks in a setup or i show it how it looks in a setup and then people want it people want it products and tiktok are two things that go well and well uh you get one big reviewer one big person that's that loves tiktok or does really good videos and you put them on a mouse pad and it like if they have a really supportive fan base they will buy something that means something to them and it's not and it's further than just just selling a product and making the money it's selling a product to people who love your streams and who really look up to you and that really want to be like you and that really are inspired of what you're doing and that and my whole brand is really r prove them wrong it's it's all about that and and like that whole thing for me is literally about prove them wrong and it and it still is in my setup today because of that reason I've noticed it, that, it yeah. is my slogan it is my slogan for everything like prove them wrong has literally become like one of the biggest sa sayings in my community because of how how influential it is for me um you know what i mean and so it's just it's just so nuts to see that like you know one day we'll have it on boxes and stuff and just like you know that kind of thing um, absolutely yeah so it's really really cool to see like prove them wrong has been a really like big influential thing for me um because it's really really cool to see how much uh, how many people i've proved wrong in this process and um yeah it's just interesting it's interesting to see well you just like me and you know the story as you may not remember them we talked about them multiple times in our past you are somebody who did not have the easiest of childhoods as well as you know, from my childhood, I struggled in severe homelessness. I had a very hard time growing up after the house robbery and everything. You, you know that whole story from way in the past. We don't have to get into all that. You also have had a very hard upbringing. So prove them wrong means a lot more to people like you and I than I think the average person. Some people have had a very easy opportunity to grow, but that thing of having that underdog determination, right? You had, you went through the hardships you've understood your own value and you've invested in your own value. And then you've made that work time and time again. I think that's massive. And is that exactly what that means to you in that long run of like, prove them wrong isn't just like a, a buzz phrase to try to get attention or like an inspo or whatever. It's actually what you feel, your ethos of your character. Like, like I think the whole, the whole narrative of Gutsy Aiden is being like, gutsy ballsy like that whole reason it's in my last name it's in my blood like that whole thing is going out there and doing something that no one else has ever done and regardless of what people tell you like you'll always prove someone wrong regardless of what what they say to you or what they're going to tell you i will always prove someone wrong and i will always end up winning in the end and the yeah. way i see it is that if i can always have that happen and sometimes you'll take losses and sometimes you'll lose and sometimes you'll realize that you were the person that was proved wrong in a situation but the way that i see it is no matter what situation i'm in i will always try to be the one that proves people wrong if they doubt me they tell me that i won't be able to do something I that's fine and i will always say that i'll do it regardless of what it is and it, it doesn't matter if it's merch sales it doesn't matter if it's you know uh, stream or if it doesn't matter what it is i will if it benefits I will you always at all. try it. even if it doesn't benefit me at all and it helps someone else I'll just prove to prove that wrong. you could exactly yeah yeah well i'll be honest i've gotten through everything that i had prepared for you so now we have a couple of viewer questions lined up as soon as we're done with these i'll let you go free what time is it for you now it's like what uh we started uh, at nine it's so it's only seven, seven. Yeah, yeah so you still got plenty of time to stream so i won't keep you handcuffed much longer once we get through these i'll have you on the other side brother of course. Um, so, number one, we already touched upon, which was the story behind the mouse pads. If you guys didn't see that, just tune in a bit earlier. You guys will catch that for sure. But this one's an actually important one that I think I'm a bit curious about. Um, what responsibilities does being a partner streamer bring? And also, I guess, opportunities. I know of things like the bounty board. I know of things like, you know, what, what they offer on the other side of that. But do you feel like there's an additional cost to it? 
like uh like you're saying like being a partnered streamer or like being partnered on twitch yeah I, well I honestly is there is there a tiktok equivalent to partner or no because i'm assuming yes, you've hit that yeah okay there I it haven't, is i haven't hit verification now uh, you have to have like over a million followers on tiktok to be verified okay uh and because tiktok's like algorithm is different so like it's easier easier to get views than other platforms so they just kind of think that once you have like you know you're getting 500k views a video like you're you're your partner but for my end so honestly with being partnered i the only thing that i see in partnered is is it looks better to brands and like you know you get like the emotes you get the more emote slots which i haven't even like done everything yet or you know uh, you get better like splits usually for like subs and stuff but i actually run the same splits as a as an affiliate and like for me partnered wasn't really that big of a difference the only thing that i really noticed was um the verification badge streamer bigger streamers will notice you more um and read your chats more i do notice that because it kind of it kind of stands out to them um and um the the whole emote thing having more emote slots is, is always an, is a nice thing yeah but i i honestly didn't know this much from from twitch partner um because and and honestly i th i know that more brands will reach out to you because of your your partner status but i actually haven't received much of uh that kind of stuff tiktok's more my avenue with with brand deals um and and i i do offer when I, when like what like, say a brand reaches out to me i'll be like yeah i also stream and i have a partner i'm a partner twitch streamer like that that to themselves kind of is a better look on you and they'll probably yeah. offer you more money but overall you know in all it's it's not like a, a difference you know it's not a huge huge difference gotcha um well i could tell too because you're not someone who treats partnership like you often see in partnership you still talk to every single person in your chat uh, you still make sure you respond to everybody you still give everyone the light of day and i think that's a big difference a lot of people get partnership and their chat just becomes hey chat and that's it and they, they do their content and maybe if somebody subs or donates a lot they'll respond but they're just like focused on them their friends their whatever and not the chat so yeah. I think that's huge and big ups to you for doing that because that's a gigantic shift that so many people don't realize. Like you're putting in a lot there by doing that. Yeah, I try to respond to a lot of my messages um, when it comes to streaming. Like I try to like be involved with my chat all the time. It's like, I love doing that. Yeah. All right. Um, second question. In your opinion, what do you think would make a difference between a good and a bad streamer? This question was to both of us. I'll shoot first quick if you don't mind. Um, in my opinion, a good streamer is somebody who's doing it for the right reasons, right? Somebody who cares about their community, someone who values their followers, subscribers as actual humans and not just numbers and, and analytics. And somebody who genuinely is doing it for the fun of it all and not for treating it like a business or a collegiate prospect. You know, it should be enjoyed because we're capable and we're lucky enough to do it. Anyone who can stream is, you know, probably top 10% of the world right they have the setup they have the internet they have the technology to do so you're lucky you're blessed and there are a lot of people who take it for granted you know i've been in chats where you know you host someone you raid someone they don't even acknowledge it they don't care about the people they're just there to do their own content which is fine right everyone has their own way and pats at the top but in my opinion if you genuinely value what you're doing and you respect the uniqueness of the opportunity you were given that's what in my opinion makes you a good streamer yeah um i would say another thing that makes people a good streamer is um is patience um patience is one of the biggest things with streaming um a lot of people get into streaming they stream three times maybe a week and then they give up and they they quit and they say it's not for me because i haven't grown and they stream like eight hours a day and then they're like oh why isn't this working i i'm streaming so much like i'm not getting any exposure what, what they don't understand is they need to start yeah they want to be a streamer but they don't understand that when you're a streamer you have to be a content creator too yeah you can't just be you can't just be a streamer you can if you're with the right people like if you know the right people like say you know uh you gotta be or lucky you know yeah. xqc or you know poke or you know these people that's different you need to learn to be a content creator you need to learn how to make videos you need to learn how to make content that people will enjoy you need to learn how to fit into a niche you need to be a marketer you need to know how to brand yourself you need to like you need to know these things or figure out these things over time and if you don't you're gonna fall behind other streamers yeah and, i mean it's and hard it's, and you also need to eat shit too i hate to say it but that's that's a giant fact fail. i mean i've had i've had 
times where in a week, you know, I've averaged higher and higher viewer counts. And then one day for like an hour, I'm sitting at two. And it feels like you get hit by a fucking truck. You feel like shit. Because for that moment, you know, you have this, oh, yeah. you, you have those eat shit moments. But then you see new people who start up and they will have one or two or three and they'll just give up because they're like, oh, I hate this so much. Like, no one's finding me out. No one's anything. You shouldn't approach it as they owe you something. They don't owe to watch you. Nobody owes you their view or their sub. You have to earn that yeah. because you have to have good, a good enough service that you're giving that you've earned that kind of acknowledgement. And if yeah, you're not you getting it, to make them stay. Yeah. exactly. And if you're not getting it, watch your VODs. Go back to the drawing board. Look at your content. If it's TikTok, if it's Instagram, look at what you're posting and seeing why that wouldn't attract it people right if you're copying off yeah. people that's fine do it in your own way right because that's that's what a lot of that is people take ideas from all the time just like you mentioned earlier but do it in your own way that's unique and creative and make it count yeah and i, I think also uh like what i've been seeing more recently is people worry about that 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 number right next to your uh subscribe button that that viewer count they leave that on they leave that on too much. They, no, they, you they, can't. They, they, you can't leave it on because Twitch is such a fluctuating platform that you need to understand that. Here's the thing. The way that I look at it is, say I average 85 viewers. That's a good stream for me. If I average like 65, yeah, it's a worse stream for me. But say I had more subs in the stream that I had 65 than I had 85. That 65 is more important than that 85. 100% and and people people will say like you know like oh I, I only averaged this and i got this many followers like that's great and all but don't celebrate your successes too early yeah i see a lot of i, I see a lot of smaller content creators come into my stream and they say man i just hit 700 followers but how active are you with that 700 followers how many of those people are going to follow you and never watch you again i know a lot of people on twitch they literally just follow people to to re-watch their stream at some time and they don't really care about being in their community sure they'll be following them but they'll go and like they'll be everybody in the chat's probably guilty of this where they'll go and they'll be like they'll follow this person and then oh i want to go watch this other person for a while i, I remember following this guy and he seems like a cool dude and i want to watch the stream at some point but uh i'm just gonna follow him for now so i remember yeah he's live if i see him absolutely live, what's up. and and this is and this is why people fail early it's because they see all these big numbers on followers and they think that is someone that is a supporter there's a difference between it means a follower nothing and a no it means nothing yeah there's, there's a there's a different there's a clear difference between a supporter and a follower my supporters i, I can list a handful of them grady rain falls venge chris um alpha those people are not just followers of me but they support me there's difference there's a very big difference between so sitting watching your stream every single day subbing to you and donating bits to you when you feel like i you should there's Absolutely. a difference between supporting you like that and just hitting that follow button and expecting something back for it there's a huge difference and mm -hmm. everybody there's yeah it, it's just a, there's a huge difference and people don't understand that difference like they'll come into my stream and be like yo i followed and i'm mean, like yeah thank you for the follow man i appreciate it nothing else it's like no no there isn't yeah there isn't anything else there isn't you know what i mean and speak for you yourself i do push-ups like, but it, it doesn't work like that you know what i mean <laughs> like, that, that to me it doesn't it doesn't work you know what i mean it's yeah. like i want to i want to get to know you but if you just come to my stream and follow me and expect something from me i'm going to think the worst of you and i and i don't want to but if you're expecting something from me it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like you're genuine and that's a lot of twitch's problem is people coming into the stream and being like yo this is my link to my twitch span says this fan. oh that's the yeah, worst man. dude get out it's, it's yeah like, get out dude, it's like come on like you, you, you should know better a paid. mile away yeah you should know better from a mile away the hard part is there's a lot of those streamers who who their whole stream is 70 viewers but if you go in there it's all people posting their own links and going to following each yeah. other and i that's oh it's such a cesspool oh my god it's such a cesspool it kills it's me ridiculous yeah, and I think and I think that like right now I'm I'm super young uh compared to most content creators on Twitch, I think. Like unless you're like, you know, other people like XQC and people like that, they're still young, but compared to me, I feel like I'm a, a younger person when it comes to that. And Oh, definitely. Um, I get called boomer all the fucking time. I hate it. Do you know how many yeah, people I think I'm like 30? Like people people come into my chat they're like you look like a 30 old man play I'm like, bro, I'm 23. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Shit, 
Oh, man. I, I thought you were like 25, I'm not going to lie. But... Oh, you see, here we go. <laughs> People think Shit, I'm so man. much older because I don't know. It's just, I, I guess I maybe, give off that kind of a presence. Mature, but I think a lot of people. I think a lot of people, like, for me, what they'll say is, like, we don't know who you are. Because a lot of people, what the problem is, they'll come to my stream. And I've actually had more people come to my stream off of recommended than they do from TikTok. And, yeah. And and I think that Twitch, like, needs to have some sort of better job of, like, like getting to know a streamer more. And it's hard. It's really hard unless you have, like, a podcast or you're talking to somebody to really, like, get that connection built. Yeah, um, and learning those things with people like that's the hardest part. Well, I've noticed a lot of your TikTok isn't even gaming. Like for example, I have two friends who are starting to kind of grow really well on TikTok. Like like pretty great avenue of growing on TikTok. Um, Oversoul and Moss Windu, who primarily focus on gaming, and they're starting to get a hang of the algorithm as well, and starting to grow on followers and whatnot. And they've seen some come over, but I also think that the number one thing is similar to what you mentioned earlier, that's not the job of TikTok. TikTok isn't a moving platform. It is a platform to grow on, in which case people can come over, but it's not meant to be like a farm, like, like, hey, I'm over here. Like, hey, everyone here, I'm over here. You know what I mean? Like, It's, it's good to announce that you stream, and it's good to remind it every, like, three to four vi videos. Like, so say, like, you post a video, and, like, two days ago, you posted a video shouting at your Twitch. It was, like, three days later, and you you announce it again because you probably gained like a thousand followers between that and they have no idea who you are now yeah and and that's another thing that i even feel that's a that's a gigantic like, assumption like gaining a thousand followers in three days that's a, that's a you kind of conversation there pal <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well some people some people will gain that their video yeah. gets a lot of traction say they get like a viral video on the for you page and it say it's like thirty thousand. they may get like a thousand followers that's that's a good amount and it, you know they they may have that number to roll them right and they may get the thousand followers but there's you gotta understand those thousand followers are following you for your content right now and as you change divide diversify yourself early on and don't stick to one niche too hard because what happens is people will expect that niche every day from you and if you stick in that too far too far in the mud you're gonna get too stuck to where you can't make anything else and so yeah you, you know yeah. what i mean I'm with you. No, I get that 100%. So, yeah, like, just try to diversify yourself early on and don't stick to one niche. Maybe make tech videos. Maybe make car videos. Maybe make, uh, you know, make Twitch. Make something about Twitch. A new feature you found out about Twitch. Uh, something that happened in your stream. Make a story. Story things do well on TikTok. Those things are what help you versus things that hurt you is, like, just shouting out your blatant Twitch and be like, yo, go follow me. That's actually the final that's actually actually the final question that I had for the um, for the questions that we got from chat. Well, one of the final questions, a couple I skipped because they just don't make sense. Like, where do you live? And I'm not going to go into your personal details. None of that's important. But what's one thing you can do to improve your streams and TikToks? So that, I think streams was to both of us, but TikToks is obviously your your forte. Um, and I think that's something that I'm not I'm not like too prideful to say I could learn from, too. Because a lot of my thing was I tried to be really creative and really fun with the edits. And then a video doesn't do well. And I'm almost wondering if it's myself. And that's what I mentioned before. You know, people talk about the too many hashtags and not enough hashtags, this and that. Algorithm, what time do I post? What time do I do this? And I think that that made me overthink it so much that I started to almost deteriorate my content. Because I was so focused on the, you know, the rumors that I feel like I need to just put some sage in the room, clear the air and say, all right, what the fuck is the actual brass tacks of, 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 you know, approaching content. Yeah, and I think I think what people need to understand is it's not just an algorithm. It's a platform. Yeah. And people and people all the time will tell you this is this is exactly how you grow. This is exactly how you do this. Don't delete your videos. It's gonna hurt you. Like there's so many myths and everybody spreads this around. In in reality, us TikTokers just like we just post when we want. Usually later in the day sometimes it does good. Fuck it. We post in the morning, post at night, <laughs> we stream like it doesn't like to us it doesn't seem like it's like that big of a deal and like the hashtags we just put the hashtag what the video's about and it's like if the video does well it does well if it does bad reevaluate your evaluate your content what worked what doesn't remake a video look at your watch time pay attention to your watch time for videos that will make your attention span of your viewer base how many seconds do they watch your videos every time when you post a video is it around 15 to 24 make those in that range 
um if you see a video that's like blowing up blowing up pay attention to the out the out, like why what time you post post again on that same time like it's it's very generic stuff that may help you growing um when you hit a thousand followers on TikTok, you can see how many people are active and for me like even though i have 200 like something thousand followers i get like 45 to 50k active on yeah, TikTok. just like twitch and, and and that's and it is you see what i'm saying like yeah my fault like a lot of people have dead followers and that's just not you know what i mean you still get growth so get growth 200 300 that's content creation though man content creation yeah. includes it's just a fact of the matter just because i have what is it 20 almost 25 2600 on instagram means dick like it doesn't mean every post is going to get 2600 follow like likes yeah. Who, whoever might be awake at that time whoever might see it whoever might have been on their phone or maybe they got busy that day like they're not everyone not everyone's yeah, gonna see I, it and that doesn't translate and, and I, yeah and i think like like even with me like i still like i made like my best edit i've ever made and it did the worst on my channel so yeah so, the, what know, video is that so, i want to see it so i just posted it today and it was a video on my setup and it did like six thousand in eight hours which is absolutely dog i've never had a video unperform that bad and so and you know and that's also part of like realizing your failures and your strengths and your non-strengths and what what things blow up for you what things don't and even though you've worked a lot of work into it maybe people like the more simple stuff maybe my audience isn't interested in, in editing and and crazy shit, you know and, yeah. and that is different that is just how you learn like an example i made this edit i was like damn this thing's awesome i put a little bit of time into it it was really fucking solid i, I spent some time like filming and it was like a really good TikTok. it could have been my time of post it could have been sunday it could have been you know but i'm not going to delete it because tomorrow i may it may shoot off out of nowhere yeah TikTok sometimes even though they do bad in the beginning the next two three days like i've had a video that will hit like four thousand in the first day i was like what the hell the next day instant 80k i was like whoa like you know, it just it really just happens like it doesn't it doesn't really define it but once you see that like you start getting a lot of notifications from that one video you go start commenting and replying to those people and that's why a lot of people will understand like oh this video does well now but even though he posted three days ago it's still getting 20k and pushed to the 40 page so who knows what what algorithm works there's no algorithm to post daily it doesn't matter if you post daily or not i think consistency is good and posting one thing a day is good but honestly who cares what you post and what time you post because it honestly doesn't matter you should okay. know what your audience like if you know your audience is on at night maybe stream at night and post at night <laughs> that's all i gotta tell you like, you know what I mean? if, you, if you see your audience that's active on on tiktok say yeah. like say 100 uh, say 60,000 are online right now i'd make a video and post right now and go live like it doesn't matter what 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 it is if you can find a peak number in your like an example there was a day that i had 40k to 50k active people that's the highest number i've ever seen and it jumped up to 60k and i posted four videos that day and they all did above 60k and it's because yeah. TikTok has an M algorithm. It goes up, down, up, down. There'd be high moments, low moments. And right now, considering in my channel, it's a low moment, right? Yeah. But as soon as one video hits a high, all your videos will start hitting that high too. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Write it while you can. It's, yeah, exactly. As long as you can post really, really good, consistent, nice videos, stream moments, um, things that happen, crazy moments. Like an example today, I got a bunch of gifted subs and stuff like that. And I'm going to turn that into a TikTok. Like those things will help you. And if you like take those for granted and you don't look at that, you need to look at those things um, and um, grow off of that. So I, I just think that when you gotcha. start those, you just got to like, you got to look at those things and, and really notice key patterns. Like one video will, one video, bam, my, uh, my video, my up right now, a lot of you will look at my channel let's post four more like fuck it like you might as well just post something that's good is, you know? is there value in live at all or no from the way i see it i see a lot of twitch streamers like go live on tiktok while they're live um i've noticed that those people do well i don't know if it works for me but i will definitely interest you like i'm going to definitely try it um what i'm gonna try is when a when a video goes viral if it's going really really well say it's got like 40k in the first three hours i'm definitely gonna go live and then go live capitalize on, on it and, yeah and can, try to try to see if i can if i can get shovel can sho shovel video. shovel them over kind of in that kind of like a hey i'm live yeah. here but just you know i'm live on twitch and that's where i'm really talking to people 
Yeah. Okay. I've yeah. seen a lot of streamers do that. And what they'll do is they'll kind of like, it, I think right now TikTok, what it needs is it needs a content creator who doesn't promote Twitch that much, I think is what it needs. And even because like right now people go on it, like even I will go on it and I'll see someone's live and I'm like, ah, I want to sleep right now. I don't want to really watch TikTok. Like I, I'd rather just sleep. Or it's like, I'm watching TikTok and I'm trying to get ideas and I see some kid promoting his Twitch channel and I don't really want to go. Yeah. It's, that's just kind of how I feel. And I feel like a lot of people are trying to feel the same way. If I was a viewer right now, how would I feel? I would feel like, damn, I, they're just really trying to get me off this uh, this platform. It's really weird, huh? So <laughs> that's, that's you know, I would feel like I feel like I would want to see more content on TikTok. You know, more originality, more uh, interesting things. It can be from your streams, but I would say make more interesting things to happen on TikTok. That's what I'd say. Gotcha. My final thing I'll bring up to you here. This is a segment I do with everyone and not just you specifically. How would I make a TikTok out of this podcast? <laughs> would you? <laughs> I said, how would you? I'm only how joking, I, though. You I, don't actually, I, I you don't. Take, I don't know. I mean, I would take, I would take the best moment, like maybe talking about like how to grow on TikTok, like my perspective, and maybe tag me in it and be like, you know, I don't know, just say like, um, this is these are some simple steps you can use to boost your algorithm or boost your views some like something like that those those things can help you too um you know i'm not those moments i wouldn't intentionally milk you for views Gatsy. you've made your own success i feel like i deserve to make my own success as well in my own way but if one pops up you know Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. i don't care if you use me i don't well also you want this film uh yeah i can i can download the one cool like I'll, uh, I'll get it. Uh, as soon as I have it, I'll Google Drive it over to you, man, so you have full sure, access sure. to the whole thing. Um, but, yeah, so that wraps us up to the end, man. Um, obviously, this is going to go wherever I can post it, you know, YouTube. I'll try to get some stuff onto uh, Twitter and Instagram and whatnot. But where is the best place to find you? Obviously, we have the same name everywhere. I'm assuming Gutsy Aiden, TikTok, Gutsy Aiden, Instagram, Gutsy Aiden, Twitter, Gutsy Aiden, Twitch. Uh, yeah. And most yeah, importantly, but... your website, too, now with that drop coming in February for the mouse pads. Yes, yes. If you guys are interested in getting a really cool mouse pad, they are um, just a little quick uh, facts sheet about these. Uh, they're 4 mil thick, 36 by 18. All the uh, all the drawings are done by my artist. Draws them by hand. Um, and, yeah, we do drops, and we do them on Twitch as well. We do them live as well, so it's, it's like a really fun, interactive thing. You guys can see how many sales we sell or how fast we sell out. Like, it's really fun. It's really interactive. And um, it gives you the full analytics when we're doing it. And also, like, it, it has alerts and stuff that pops on the screen. So it's, it's really, really cool and interactive um, drops. I don't have a date for it quite yet, but if you want to stay tuned with me and ask me stuff, I'm always available to, for questions and stuff like that. So Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time. I know, I don't know how long I took you here. Hopefully you got some enjoyment out of this as well because I honestly, it's been a great way to catch yeah, up awesome. with you just for everything else. And um, For sure. Listen, man, I hope you have a phenomenal rest of your night. Take it easy, brother. Yeah, you too. Bye, Bye everyone. Now.